Now we're going to talk about audio again. We talked a little bit in the second section, getting started with gear as to the importance of audio and some audio types. We're going to talk more about the audio microphone types and why you may want to use them. Harold? Yes, let's start off with some of these categories of microphones. So first up, we've got dynamic microphones. Now a dynamic microphone, as we talked about earlier, does not require 48 volt phantom power. It does require amplification, which is why you would use a preamp we'll talk about soon. Dynamic mics are very good in studios or areas where it's noisy. If you're recording an external event, a dynamic mic is probably a better shot than maybe using a condenser or, or other kinds of microphones, only because they reject noise pretty well. Dynamic mics are cheaper, normally, than condenser mics. Dynamics are very solidly built. They reject noise from all angles really well. And they have a really uh, a fairly good sound. They, they're actually very clean. Some dynamic mics sound beautiful. So it just depends how much you're willing to spend on a dynamic mic. I wouldn't go any less than probably a Shure SM58, which is under $100, but has a wonderful sound. You could spend thousands on a dynamic mic, though I think the most expensive one we have is probably in the 550 range, maybe 600, and it's very good. That would be like the Shure SM7B or the Electrovoice RE27ND. Those are very, very good mics with great sound. Condenser microphones. Now the condensers, those are what you usually hear when people are talking, doing voiceover narration. You may hear dynamics, but many times they'll be condensers. They're smoother, they have a nicer sound. But it depends on what your needs are. They can also be much more sensitive and as a result, noisier. So condenser mics work very well with any of the gear that we talk about whether it's preamplifiers, whether it's going direct into some box or other, into mixers. They're just as good as dynamic mics in terms of connectivity. They do, however, require 48 volt phantom power. Without that bit of power, they won't run. And so you do need that. And then, of course, they need amplification beyond that, which is what you do with your uh, preamplifier and or mixer. And Finally, here we have shotguns and ear set microphones. Yeah, we again, we talked about those earlier. A shotgun microphone is a cylindrical long microphone that has extremely good side and back rejection. They're very good indoors or outdoors. They're also very good if you are in an outdoor shoot or an event shoot and you want to get the sound from, let's say, a group talking or maybe even getting some... Uh, ambient noise sound. Uh, they're very good because they're pointing straight ahead and that's where that sound source is. They're not good if you're pointing straight ahead and the sound is over here or over there. No, they're really good for pointing straight on. That's why they're called shotguns because they point and the sound shoots that way. It comes in at it straight in. So again, some shotgun mics are the favorites for voiceover talent. The Sennheiser MKH416 is a very popular shotgun microphone, which is used heavily in voiceover work, in other kinds of things. Keep in mind, you can put a shotgun really close to you, or you can leave it 10 feet away, 20 feet away. It's amazing how far you can put some of them, and they have longer shotguns if you need more distance. Uh, so you have a lot of choices with shotguns. Now, ear set mics like these, they hang over one ear or they can hang over two ears, but they're very small. Those are very good. They also have headset mics that you could put on and they have a boom that comes out here. This is a very small boom mic, very small, and it barely gets to the side of your mouth. They're very good. You've probably been on cell phones where they have wireless mics, uh, lavalier type mics, or actually, um, and they actually get the sound from, from your maxillary bones, from the jaw bones that vibrates. They get a little bit from the mouth, but a lot of it's from the vibrations. It's pretty amazing. So that's the kind of mics that you could use for your podcasting or broadcasting. Any one of them will work. 
It's look at your environment, look at the kinds of gear you have. We don't recommend shooting with camera mics ever. There's a reason for it. They suck. It's true. They really have lousy mics. Some cameras have good mics if you're this close to them. You get about that far, not so good. So I would not use camera mics for anything. You can, for example, the camcorders usually have built-in shotguns. I wouldn't because you're going to get noise. And the further off you are, the worse it's going to sound. So definitely stick to either wireless labs or really connected microphones to get good sound. Next, we have recommendations for other audio equipment. First up is the one-stop audio solution of the Rodecaster Pro. The Rodecaster is an interesting device because, in essence, as we talked about earlier, it's a recording studio in a box. It has a lot of control and power, and it actually sounds pretty darn good. For a 600 or so dollar investment, you can't go wrong with that if you don't want to do anything more complex. It actually works pretty well, but again, that's really for more than one input. So if you only have one input, you can buy a small converter like a Shure X2U where you put your mic in and it goes out into your USB and that's all you need. And it sounds wonderful. Uh, the Shure, the Centrance, C-E-N-T-R-A-N-C-E, Centrance makes really good uh, adapters too for microphones and it will work very well for you. Keep in mind that they only do one microphone. So if you need more, something like the Rode, Rodecaster is a great choice if you're just starting out and you want something that sounds pretty good with more than one mic. Preamps. In this case, we're showing USB mixers. Yeah, preamps are exactly what they do. They preamplify the mic signal before it gets amplified all the way in either a USB mixer or some other kind of, of mixing device. Now, mixers are great because you could put and see all of your connections right up front. Nothing is, is hidden away. All your connections are there. You can have anywhere from a two channel, four channel, uh, eight channel, 16 channel, 32 channel mixers. You can have a lot of channels on a mixer. You can usually put up to, like for example, we have the Personas Studio Live 16. That has, I think, eight mixer inputs and then eight other inputs. And the mixer inputs uh, for voice are eight, and then you have eight other ones that you could use for music. But in total, you have 16. So 16 can be all for music, 16 can be all for mics, depending on how you connect them in. And that just gives you a lot of flexibility. Uh, for example, an event where somebody may, may be doing live casting would be a concert. And many times there's a mixing board at the concert mixing in all of the different band instruments. Now, if you've got an orchestra, you're going to have a lot more mics than that. Um, but you can get very large mixing boards for live events like, like a concert. Next, audio interfaces. Yeah, now a mixer is also an audio interface. But we have a category of audio interfaces that are a little smaller that can hold anything from one channel to two channels to 48 channels of audio. And these are nice compact devices. You, they're usually rack mounted as you saw in our studio tour. You mount it on a rack and then you, and you can even mount it on portable racks and take it with you. And they give you a lot of flexibility in how you connect your mics or instruments. Sometimes you may be having a musical instrument in there for whatever reason. Or you may want to connect uh, recorders or other things, playback devices, phones, iPods, all that kind of stuff. So all of that can be connected to these devices, and that'll give you a way to mix it very quickly and cleanly. The, the preamplifiers also remember amp or amplify the signal that's coming from your microphone, whether it is a dynamic condenser or any other kind. Finally, we have, for external events, external interfaces like the MixPre or Zoom F4 or F8. Yeah, those are great little interfaces. They're about this big. In fact, I have, this is about how big some of them are. Not much bigger than this little mic case. Maybe a little thicker, but they're very, very good. They have great preamplifiers, and they can mix anywhere from four to eight or more 
up to probably 16 uh, microphones into them. We have the sound devices Mix Pre 6. It's a great controller. We've used it on professional video shoots before. It does a great sound. You can hook up to six mics on it. Not only that, it provides time code for your video camera if you want that. And that's a good place to put it in the audio. So that's one of them. The Zoom F4, I think there's an F5 now if I'm not wrong. Those also give you pretty good sound and the ability to create, uh, uh, put in four to eight microphones into these. They're small, but they have good sound quality. Uh, they do take a lot of batteries up. So even though you can use batteries with them, uh, if you can get a power adapter, they work a lot better with power adapters uh, because they can last forever. But if you're in the field, you probably just have to get external. What we usually get is we get power supplies, the bricks, the USB bricks that can charge other things. And we'll charge one of those. They can usually give us somewhere between 8 and 12 hours or more of power. And then we charge it. We charge the external power cable into those and boom we've got a long video shoot that we can do. So those are things that, you know, we just gave them to you for reference to look for as far as portable devices. Keep in mind also, you can take larger equipment and they have portable racks. You can get a large rack with maybe eight to 16 devices or a smaller one which carries three. That may be all you need for an external video shoot. In studio, sky's the limit, you can do whatever you'd like, but there's many choices in any of this. And that's it for our audio recommendations. And on the topic of external events, our next chapter is external events, where we're going to talk about gear, different setups that you can use to get your stream online from an external location.